Greetings everyone, Tim Anderson here, aka Renfell, and welcome to the latest episode of Monday Musings, the show where I talk about all the different things that are going on in the week, whether it's things that Chris and I are doing, books that I'm reading, shows that we're watching, games that I'm playing, and a little bit of Project Dramon on top. And yes, I have this still from last week. Um, theoretically, uh, today is, I'm, I'm pre-recording this, of course, on Sunday, like I usually do, so it's, it's August 8th at the moment. This happened last Wednesday, last Wednesday, last Sunday. I need to take a breath. <laughs> I just got finished eating lunch. It happened last Sunday at around the same time. It's about 4 p.m. right now. Um, I had recorded the episode last week, went to sit down and watch a movie with Chris, went to go shut doors, was running through the house, and... Hit a corner of the house with my face, which was fun. Um, so yeah, um, I still have this. Theoretically, I can take this off tomorrow if I want to. Um, it's still a little tender, and I can't. It's it's. I'm not sure yet if uh, it's because I have the bandages on or not, because this does push things in a little bit. Um, I'm still a little stuffy on the left hand side. Uh, which that's the side I clocked, and that's what they're wanting to take a look at in a week or two to see whether or not I'm going to need a septoplasty surgery, which is where they go in and um, they will um, fix the septum. Because right now it is crooked. It is pushed that direction. Um, so, yeah, it, it looks like a big S in the x-ray. Um, but some of that was from many years ago I took a hay bale to the face an 80 pound hay bale from the top of a semi truck it fell you know 15 feet and clocked me in the face so I had already had a deviated septum but I never really had breathing problems um, but I definitely have not been able to breathe out of the side since this happened um, so we're gonna wait and see uh, probably change the bandages in another day or two and, and see how things are feeling and d there's no real pain right now and there, there hasn't been a lot of pain other than the first three days it was kind of gnarly and all up through here because um, I just kind of clocked the whole side of the face but uh, yeah cosmetics you know don't hit me in the face of how I make a living um, so that's that's the first big thing because uh, I look a little funny in these videos let's see first and foremost I was finally convinced to give Final Fantasy 14 a serious try I say serious try because I had tried it a couple of times in the past. Uh, first time, I want to say, was circa 2016. Tried it for a couple weeks, didn't really care for it. Uh, was convinced to come back right after Heaven's Ward had launched, which I think is the second expansion. And so I that, bought that on the PC and decided to give it another go. I lasted about three weeks and, again, lost interest. Some of it is the art style, um, which is... I say that because I've played all of the Final Fantasy games. Um, not all of them, most of them. Um, I haven't played like 15 or 12, I think. Uh, or 11. Um, so I haven't played all of them. But I've played most of them in the main series. So, uh, But just when it comes to my MMORPGs, I do have... I do prefer that Western, like, Skyrim or EverQuest 2 type, you know, Lord of the Rings Online. I like the Western art style, the Western European art style, as opposed to the Eastern Asian art style. There's something about the, ooh, woo, that, 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 that kind of, you know, I don't want to call it, I don't want to lump it all in again, together, together with like anime, but I'm just, I'm not a big fan of anime for that reason as well. Um, some of them have very good storylines, but just the, the, I don't care for the art style and the way the voiceovers are done. Um, it's just who I am. Everybody's got preferences. You know, it's like, I also don't like uh, some, I don't like thriller movies, or like slasher movies. I don't like slasher movies. Not because I don't like violence. I love violence in my movies. I just don't like the slasher genre. So I have zero interest in watching the Saw movies or the Hostel films. I may have seen one out of each of those series, and one was enough. It was like, yeah, it's not for me. Um, anyway, um, they've made some significant changes to the game in the leveling process. And after hearing Simurg and Nathan Napalm talk and about it and rant about it, how good it is and everything else, over the past few months as I've been participating in the Looking for More show, uh, 
I said, screw it. Everything was on sale, like 60% off um, on the PlayStation right now. So, like, I was able to get... I don't know if the starter edition is 60% off, but the expansion was 60% off. Anyway, I got the starter edition on the PS4. I don't want to play it on the PC, even though I own the, fir the first base game and the expansion game. I wanted to play it on the PC, because I want something where I can go sit on the couch and just veg for four or five hours um, and play it that way. And I have to admit, I've been playing it pretty much... I don't want to say non-stop. I've played it a lot since Thursday when I picked it up. I picked it up during the show on Thursday afternoon. Started playing it that night. I'm already level 31. Uh, my Thermaturge is already a Black Mage. Um, I got my Chocobo mount and everything else. What's really interesting, though, is because of the way they've changed the quest line, um, I'm, I'm several levels ahead of the actual quest lines now because the way they've sped things up and I haven't had to do any of the side quests and this was a major turnoff to me this is the other part of it that I didn't like it before the art style was only a fraction of it the major issue I had with the game before was because it kept forcing me into doing things that I didn't want to do in order to have my primary levels high enough to do the main quest which is the I think it's called the main scenario main I think it's what it's called, the main scenario. Um, before, every time I had played, you would do a few quests in the main scenario, and then you would have to pause, and you would have to go do dungeons, and leave quests, and, and side quests, and uh, fates, and all these other things, and you would have to grind levels to get high enough to do the next part of your main quest. And that immediately turned me off i'm like if i can't do the thing that i want to do in your game then i'm not going to play your game now they've changed it and just doing the main scenario quests i haven't touched a single side quest at all and i'm several levels ahead of the main quest and because of the way it does scaling it, it always feels appropriately difficult when i'm doing the quests because it'll it'll drop your level down um, to do the storyline quests so this time around, because of those changes, I've been able to play the game like an RPG as opposed to an MMORPG where I'm forced to go do all these other things that I don't necessarily want to do, like fetch quests. I don't want to do fetch quests. I fucking hate fetch quests. Um, so this time around, I have to say, I am having a lot of fun. One, because they've streamlined it. Two, because I'm able to play it like a traditional... Final Fantasy RPG and so I'm able to just do the storyline and there's stuff there on the side so that if I want to go do that I can but it's optional I don't have to and that is what I love I love a game that gives me the freedom to do the things that I want to do without forcing me to do things a certain way because the moment you take my agency away and you tell me that I have to do something this way um, I have to do it in this order, or you have to grind these quests to do this. Um, and I'm not talking, it, I'm not, it's not the same thing when you have a story arc and you need to go from point A to point B. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being told, well, in order to do the storyline, you first have to do these 10 things. I'm not a big fan of that. Flip side, I do like progression. Like I like keyed progression for raids so it's a catch-22 it's a weird thing where I like it but I don't like it it's weird anyway I have been enjoying Final Fantasy 14 this time around um, and it was nice because the starter edition for the PS4 came with um, the base game and Heaven's Ward you can go all the way to level 60 and you get 60 days of expansion, 60 days of subscription time included in that. So it's like two months of subscription time, 20 bucks, and I'm in, done. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to, I haven't I haven't done it yet. I was wanting to make sure that I was enjoying it. So I was like, I'll spend the 20 bucks. And as long as I'm having fun in a few days, I'll go ahead and buy the Endwalker expansion, which includes Endwalker plus the two previous expansions, so there's those three plus the two that you get in the starter edition. And because that's all discounted right now, I can get all of it for like 50 or 60 bucks. And then I own the entire storyline on the PS4. And I can play it at my leisure. And then um, November is when the expansion launches. So I've got, <clears throat> I've got all the way to November to go through all this other storyline, which is fine. 
The only other game that I have on my radar that I've pre-ordered and I plan on playing is uh, Pathfinder Wrath of the Righteous, which comes out September 2nd. So I'll probably take, uh, you know, there will be a few days where I go play that game when it launches so that I can get some good content around it for the YouTube. Um, I don't know that I'm going to stream that game. I'm, I'm, I'm streaming a lot less than I was before. Like Celesta, I streamed every single day for like, I don't know, 12, 14 days, however many days it took me to beat. That really took it out of me. Like I don't like to stream all the time, every day. Um, I have a, I sit here in a desk for my day job. Um, I'm not like a lot of other, you know, streamers who do other things and they come home and they stream. Um, in terms of, since I'm not a full-time streamer, um, how do I say that? So like ma many other part-time streamers, they have a day job where they're out and then they come home and they want to be sitting in front of their desk and they want to play games and they want to do all this stuff. That's great. I love games. But when you sit here and you have a desk job, like I do, um, you don't necessarily want to have to sit at your desk all day, every day, and just only sit here. I mean, Chris and I have been, we were training, this is really frustrating, we were training for a 5K, we've, we've been doing a 5K for the past, like, six weeks, we, we, we spent, like, three months getting up to that point, and then we'd been doing our 5K, and then we were, we had been working on the past few weeks on reducing our, our run time in the 5K, and, um, then I clocked my nose. So I wasn't able to do any running this week. And I tell you what, it was very frustrating because that has been our like anchor point of the day every day. Um, because we alternate, we do the 5k run then we do sprints. And then we did. So 5k run one day sprints the next day, day off 5k run sprints day off. And we just repeat that cycle. And each day that we do it, it is a three kilometer walk to the place where we run and do sprints and it's a three kilometer walk on the way home so it's you know it's 30 minutes there 30 minutes back and we're usually there for 30 to 45 minutes depending on what we're doing so we're getting a good hour and a half every single day sometimes up to two hours where we just get out of the house and we go do that and we haven't been able to do that this weekend it's been very frustrating because that's like that's the way we break our day up because i usually get up early she'll 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 sleep you sleep till what nine or ten chris most days yeah she stays up a little later than me too but she'll usually sleep till nine or ten i get up around six or seven um depending on when i wake up so i usually get up and i do a lot of my stuff in the morning so emails checking and commenting on discord youtube social media all that stuff i usually play my games for me that's when I play my games is in the mornings. Um, and I don't always want to be streaming with people. I like to sit there with my coffee and just immerse myself in a game. That's my me time. And that's usually an hour and a half to two hours every single morning. Then we go for a run. We come back, shower, breakfast. I sit down and I do a few hours of day job work. I take a nap. I wake up. I do more day job work. And then in the late afternoon, early evenings is when I do my Project Dramond stuff. That's when I switch over to Project Dramond. Somewhere in there, I probably could stream on a regular basis, but I just, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't enjoy streaming like some people do um, all the time. Like I don't mind streaming once or twice a week, but I found it to be incredibly tedious when I streamed Celasta every single day. It was like, ah. Uh, I got to go do another two hours and I've already been sitting at the desk for this and, and you know, the, the run and the nap are the two things I do to break up my day. Well, there's not another break in there because at some point I need to go to bed. So it's really hard for me to find time to stream because I don't really want to. Um, that might change in the future. I don't know, but I like being able to do things on my time when I feel like it and not do it on a set schedule and that's something that um it gets me about streaming is like you know you need to if you're going to stream you need to do it regularly on a set time at a set day and i don't have set times or set days sometimes chris and i feel like doing this sometimes we feel like doing that sometimes it's a painting day sometimes it's a writing day sometimes it's a you know i i like having the freedom to explore all my creative outlets in a way that is flexible and suits me so in any case I may stream some stuff this winter. We'll see. Um, 
on our Netflix anyway, which is Netflix Mexico, uh, the Kelvin Timeline, Star Wars, Star Trek, excuse me, blasphemy. Um, the Kelvin Timeline Star Trek films are on Netflix. And I got to say, um, I'm going to have to find time to watch those in the next couple weeks. I love those films. Um, they really, I just, I really enjoyed them. Not everybody does. I do. Um, I like Chris Pine as an actor. Um, what is her name? Zoe Zaldana? I always forget her name. Who else is there? Quint, Quint, Quentin. I don't remember the cast. I'm going to go look it up right now. Star Trek. Kelvin actors. I'll tell you who all the people are because I forget. Chris Pine. Zachary Quinto. That's who it was. I couldn't remember. Um, Carl Urban. Oh, my God. Such a good actor. Zoe Sal Saldana. Saldana. Simon Pegg. All great actors. John Cho. Like the, the, the cast for the Kelvin films is just phenomenal. Um, I was really disappointed that they couldn't get the fourth one to happen because of budget issues, um, because of contract negotiations, because... They got two big stars with Chris Pine and then Chris Hemsworth was going to be coming on for that film. And you got two guys like that who want big ass paychecks and Paramount just said, yeah, that's not going to happen. Sorry. Um, and who knows where they're going to go with it now, but I doubt I, I'd say they're going to reboot it probably with new people. We'll see. Um, I also like Star Trek Discovery, I, but I'm, I'm not a purist. Like I see a lot of people, I think it's over in um, every once in a while over in, um, Ash and Phoenix uh, from Crash While Loading over in his Discord. He, he has a couple of purists sometimes who, who get a little hoity-toity about certain franchises. And I'm just, I'm of the opinion, and it happens in my community as well. I've seen it everybody's community. But it always makes me chuckle because um, I think the most recent one was somebody was saying something about Star Wars. And I was like, you know what? I love Star Wars. Like, yeah, the Disney movies are inferior. But it's still Star Wars, and I'm still going to watch it and have fun and enjoy it for what it is because it's a Star Wars thing. Besides, also, my stick is better than bacon. We wouldn't have that song without The Last Jedi, so yeah. I like all things Star Wars, so I'm not a purist about that. I'm the same thing with Star Trek. I like all things Star Trek, and I love those films, so I'm going to be re-watching them shortly. Um, next iteration of Mondays in MMORPGs will be coming this fall. I told everybody uh, when we ended the third season, I said it was going to be a couple month break because I needed July and August to get, I had to do prep in July for the playtesting. We kicked off the playtesting whack last week for the Project Drama Tabletop. We're currently in the middle of that. And the next session is on Wednesday night, which is session two. Don't forget to tune in. If you haven't um, watched the first episode, make sure to drop back and do that. Playing at 8.30 p.m. Central through Roll20, but we are streaming here on YouTube. Um, and so that's going to be the rest of August. And then probably a couple of weeks in September. I don't, you know, I, I told everybody five to eight weeks. So if it's five weeks, we'll end up somewhere mid-September. Otherwise, it'll be end of September. And then as soon as we wrap up... Um, the playtesting, possibly before, um, but I'm probably just going to wait till we're done. But as soon as we wrap up, I'm going to turn around and do the next, you know, iteration. We're going to go back into whatever is the next iteration of Mondays and MMORPGs. I've done three seasons where I've just always talked about the developer side of things. There's, you know, there's there's a part of me that wants to take it beyond. So I really like what the uh, Battle Axe Theater guys did back when they were still doing their shows because they they did a lot of different things on their show. Now, the problem with doing a lot of different things on your show is if you're not specialized in a niche, you, it's harder to pull in an audience because you're all over the place. People having, you know, having the name Mondays and MMORPGs, people know that they're going to be, that show is going to be all about MMORPGs. But I do like to talk about as you know, this is, but this is, this is where I talk about all the things. So I might just, you know, I probably just need to shut up and keep this show about all the other things. And, um, Mondays and MRPGs is just about MRPGs, but, um, had some good feedback from people over in Patreon or over in discord. Excuse me. Thank you very much for that. Everybody for participating, you know, trying to get an idea of what, you know, what we're going to be talking about in the next iteration of the show. And I, and I think it's going to skew more towards, 
you know, talking more about upcoming games, talking about news and MMORPGs, like this whole this whole Blizzard thing that's going been going on. You know, I, I'd love to talk about it. Um, and maybe I will, but I also talk about it when I meet the guys on the Looking for More show on Thursdays. So I have a chance to get it out of my system on Thursdays when we talk about things there. Um, but there are other things that I would like to cover that we don't necessarily cover on that show because it's not my show. That's that's Simmerg's show, and I'm happy. I'm loving my time on that show. Those are great guys. I've had some really good opportunities to talk to both Nathan and Simmerg after the show. Two or three times I've been able to sit there and talk to one on one with those guys for you know hour hour and a half, sometimes two hours. I think there's been a couple times where we've talked for like two hours about life and games and rpgs and tabletop and you know you know having long distance relationships and and just lots and we're life you know and it's just it's nice to have friends that you can hang out with and chat with and have good conversations with um even if you don't have the physical you know intimacy so to speak of sitting down and having beers um those are really good guys and i love being on that show and i love the things we do on that show but it is Simmerg's show um it's his thing so the topics are his to choose from and obviously we can pitch things in but there's always things that i would love to talk about and angles that i would like to choose which it's not the time and the place this goes back to the same thing about you know guys who are in a band and they participate in this band but they also go off and have their solo projects and and do their other things because everybody has these creative outlets so um i'm rambling about things but uh Provide feedback in Discord if you could. Um, also, let me know here in the comments below what you, what you might like to see in the upcoming iteration of Mondays and MMORPGs. But I anticipate that'll be kicking off in mid mid to late September, um, as soon as we wrap up the tabletop testing, um, which was a lot of fun last night. We had a little bit of a hic few hiccups in the beginning because some of us are new to Roll Twenty, and I'm not that great at Roll Twenty, and I'm still getting up to speed on things. I'm not intimately familiar with Fifth Edition, but it was still a lot of fun. Um, second episode will be a lot more streamlined because we're getting right into the action, and we don't have to do the rolling and creation of characters and everything else. So, um, yeah, yeah. Look at my sketch here next week we're gonna have a special guest on the show um which will be the first time i've had a guest on this particular show the monday musings show typically it's just me talking about my things in my life um i asked this individual three months maybe three months ago two three months back um and they were really busy at the time and said you know hey just give me let's get past my busy stuff and then We'll do it, and then he just sent me a message today, actually, um, that he's available. So he's going to be on the show next week. So stick around, you know, stay tuned for that. You know who you are, but the rest of you, you're going to be like, who is it? Um, he he's going to be on the show next week, and um, it'll be a slightly different format because we're going to be talking about th a, a, more of a specific th thing um, related to what. He, you know his studies and his passions and what he's got going on so stay tuned for that i'll be announcing who that is next week when it comes out or maybe when we record it we'll see um but that'll be fun and we might do i might have more people on this show as we get deeper into i've been wanting to have my brother on the show um or have him be part of the mondays and mmrpgs because he does all this development but he does it behind closed doors and doesn't get to like ever put his face out and a lot of that is just because he doesn't have the time because uh, he's got two kids, an excavation company, and a cattle ranch. So uh, his his life is very, very full. But when we get into the fall and winter and the weather starts changing and he can't do as much outside work with his excavation company and stuff, and that's usually when we play games every winter, which we should... I don't know what we're going to do this winter, whether it's New World or... My, we've, traditionally, we've done Lord of the Rings Online, but we haven't done Star Wars Old Republic in a few years. So we might go back and do Star Wars Old Republic because they've got a big patch coming up this fall. This winter, I should say, and they're changing things, so it'll be a good time to jump in. Anyway, um, maybe I'll get him on the show. Um, Monday's in MRPGs, that is, not this show. Um... Goodness gracious, we're already 25 minutes in. Let's dive into Project Drama and stuff. So obviously, Tabletop. Um, 
just wrapped up chapter four yesterday at the draft. I'm not, this, this chapter was a little tricky. I, I'm probably going to need to lengthen it. Um, I need to do some editing for sure. Um, the big thing about the chapters that have been published is those are all just, I consider those rough drafts anyway. It's draft 1.0. So whenever I get finished with all the chapters, I then will be going through and doing rewrites of everything when I start to put it together for the book version. So even though people have read the Patreon version, the serialized publication of the chapters, once it's all said and done, I got to go to do rewrites. And that means changing things around, shuffling chapter rotations, um, maybe cutting some things out, adding some things in. You never know what's going to happen in a rewrite. Um, but for the meantime, these are like draft 1.0s that everybody gets to read as they come out hot off the press. So there's like no turnaround. So it's like I literally just wrote I wrote half of chapter 4 on Friday night, finished the other half on Saturday night. Um, I'm giving Chris later on today, I'm giving her her marching orders for the artwork. We're going to see if she can get the artwork done before this Thursday. If she can't, it'll be we'll publish it next Thursday. Um, she's also working on the logo work, um, for the brand. She's done three different prototypes, proofs of concepts. Um, she did another one, which I then took and kind of finalized. So we have one that's sort of a finalized proof of concept. And then she's got several iterations that she's going to turn over to me next week. And I'm going to take those and work on getting those into some more of a finalized iteration. And then once we have say five or six proofs of concept we're going to sit down with my brother and we're going to go through all those and we're going to say which ones do we like do we not like which parts of each one do we like do we want to try to meld some of these things into something else so that's an that's an ongoing process we're trying not to rush it you know we're not in a rush to share the you know brand name and everything out with people it's we have everything locked down all the websites all the social media um company name all that good stuff company foundation um, LLC, all that good stuff. So, you know, it's just a matter of whenever we feel like we've gotten the right logo for the brand. We have the, the company logos done. And for those of you who pay attention to things, you've probably already found it um, if you did some digging. Uh, because we did, we, we do have a Twitter and a, and a Twitter and a Facebook page and a website. Website's not launched yet, but it is up. And there's a coming suit thing up. But we did put the logo up on the on the fifth social media pages. So if you do some digging, you might find that. Um, but uh, no rush on that stuff um, because we're not we're not really worried about it until the demo for the um, point and click adventure game is ready to go. So you'll notice that the place that we're doing is for tabletop. It's, we're still using the project drama placeholder name. It's not important to us because we're not doing marketing at the moment. Obviously, we're sharing things out on social media, but just like we did with Saga Vasemia, this is documentation. Um, I just did an update today, the day I'm recording this. Um, I did an update this morning on evolution. Um, so we looked back at the past four months. 80, I'm going to look at YouTube real quick. I think it's 83. It might be 82. Let me look how many videos I've done. Dun, 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 dun. Where is Project Dramond? 83 videos and that does not include all of the behind the scenes videos for the adventure game update people which there have been 21 of those so i've done over a hundred youtube videos and in the ballpark of 80 posts on patreon since we started on march 1st and like 150 tiktok videos between my bro brother and i um so we've done quite a bit since we started on march 1st over the past four months so it was a nice it was a nice day to look back and remember all of the things that we've worked on and say still got a lot of work ahead of us but um we've gotten a huge chunk done and it was also nice to be able to look at some of the original sketches the original gray boxes versus like last week's update um for the adventure game and then also going back to like looking at christina when she was doing pencil sketches like that first month and then getting her tablet and starting to get into digital art and i think it was really satisfying for me even though the version of the source book that I gave to the players is very rough. The formatting sucks. It's just Microsoft Word. I'm not doing any Adobe InDesign stuff yet. It was also very satisfying to be able to produce something that had, you know, I think there's 13 or 14 pieces of her art in the source book as it is right now out of the like 20 finished pieces she's produced. And then she's got a bunch of other stuff that she's done that, that isn't quite 
where we want it for production. Um, and then I've also had her, you know, she gets sidetracked doing things like logo work and chapter art. So, I mean, she's probably done, you know, 30 over four months. She's probably done 30 finished pieces and probably 20 unfinished pieces. I don't think it's quite two a week, but hang on. What would be the math on that? Um, yeah, it's not that many. Um, it's rough. It's like maybe 30, 40 in total. Um, I'd have to do a count on it. I don't really know. But it's been cool to see all that come together. Um, adventure game-wise, Joey's been working on... Uh, he had a bug this week. Our first, The first bug that he found that he wasn't able to quickly take care of. So we actually had to get in touch with one of the pack founders. the One of the people who put together one of the packs we were using. And uh, that guy's actually worked doing some troubleshooting, hands-on troubleshooting with Joey, because even he was surprised by the bug that we're having. Was like, I've never seen that before. That doesn't seem right. Let's let me let me get some hands-on with you guys and see if we can't fix it. Um, so that's what he's been working on, on top of like putting together a quest package, a quest system, quest mechanics, so we can do the things that we want to do. Um, yeah. It's all coming together just day by day breathe in breathe out if you can if your left nostril isn't plugged up because you broke your nose <laughs> anyway i'm 30 minutes in that's enough i think we're gonna go watch suicide squad with my wife tonight this afternoon hopefully i won't run around the house i'm not gonna break my nose today it's not it's not on the agenda it's already it's already been done but uh, stick around, stay tuned. Thanks so much to all of you who have given us your support over on Patreon. I really, really appreciate that. Um, we just had a deposit a couple days ago to the account. Um, and I believe this is the first time where we're actually going to stockpile. Um, although theoretically, I could take some of that to help pay for Chris's tablet because we paid mostly for that out of pocket and her office chair. Um, to date, we've only used the um, we've used the Patreon funds for assets from the Unreal Store, and I believe we. Oh, I know what. Yeah, I know what those need to go towards. Those can go towards paying for the websites and stuff because I just paid for I paid for those out of pocket um, a few weeks back when I got everything set up. So the support you guys have have given us financially really helps out because it does help us offset um, out of pocket expenses. And hopefully, as we continue to build the Patreon, the idea is that we'll get to the point where this can compensate. Um, we're more worried about compensating Chris than anything else, because Chris doesn't have a day job. I have a day job. My brother has a day job. It would be nice for Chris to be able to get compensated for the work that she's doing. And then long term, the idea is that the Patreon will grow big enough that we can then afford to bring on other staff, contractors, so on and so forth. Um, we're still going to pay for contractors out of pocket, but... You know, it's always going to be good if uh, if Patreon um, covers things, which is it was it was pretty epic. I'll, I'll never forget the the day that we turned on the pre-order store for uh, Saga Leucemia, and we immediately went because we had spent quite a bit out of pocket. Um, I don't really remember at this point. It was up around ten thousand, I think. Um, and then uh, when we turned the pre-order store, and it was like, oh. We no longer are going to have to pay for anything out of pocket moving forward. That was a that was a cool that was a cool moment of letting us know we were on the right track with what we were building, um, and we're really looking forward to that here, which will happen. You know that'll start to happen once we start to actually do marketing and publicity, which we're not doing yet, and we're not in a rush to do um, once we have the branding and stuff done. And that was something my brother, you know, said. Oh, I think I can have the demo ready by July. That didn't happen um, because of life. Um, and we have since stepped back. And my, my wife is very adamant about, you know, because we're doing this, just the three of us, and there's no expectations from anyone, we're just not going to set timelines for anything, even if it's just the three of us. It's kind of like, you know, we can have some internal goals, but we're just going to avoid mentioning those to the public because, you know, it's, it's not worth disappointing people if we miss something by a few weeks because we decide that we want to do something different or um, etc but once we actually that's the difference is that once you turn on the marketing and you start like selling the product 
that's when you the accountability takes place and that'll happen theoretically later this year whenever we have the the first um, the, the, the polished version of the tabletop source book and the polished version of the campaign module number one whenever those are ready to go on sale which theoretically that'll be around the same time as the point and click adventure game is ready to sell sell that's when we'll actually you know turn the marketing on and, and start doing that um, maybe a little bit before we'll see ongoing chapters ah. I'm done Enjoy your week, everybody. I'll see you all Wednesday night if you want to come hang out with us as we do our tabletop game. Otherwise, I'll see you next week where I may or may not still have bandages on my face. We'll see. Have fun.